Stephen Pascoe from Beepoy. A quick question about, you said content marketing has to be authentic. How do you um, convince the client to tell the truth? What I'm getting at here is, they say branding is really what they say about you after you leave the room. That's really your brand. <laughs> so how can you get them to acknowledge that that is a perception out there of them before you go ahead with the story that they want to tell that may not resonate with the, with the public? I guess I would step back to the, 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 the thing about this thing, to identifying what the problems that someone's trying to solve. And that, you know, that, because that helps drive thinking around, well, what are the keywords people, what are the questions people are typing in the search engines to try to find us? So you can get it, and what are the questions that salespeople are hearing when they're going and having class engagement? That's, it's, keep, it's maintaining that audience focus that, okay, well, what is it these people are up to? And then it's empowering individuals to have the confidence to be themselves, to tell those stories. Uh, and I, I'm a big believer in, uh, you know, there's not in forgetting the top of the pyramid when, when trying to position a company externally. I think it's all about the middle tiers, it's about the coal face people. People don't want the, the, the higher someone gets in terms of seniority, the more the perception is that there, there's a, a controlled message or a PR element or you know, comms element in that. Uh, people want to have the real stories, hard practical tips from people who are actually talking directly to their problems. And this sort of practical problem solving content in B2B at least, is a, is a really key driver. And it's a very big difference between, everyone wants to do thought le leadership. Everyone wants to say, you know, we have very worthy content, and a lot of people come from, especially from consulting organizations, we're full of worthy content. We're very good people, we're very serious, important people, right? So we, we have this ability and bucket loads of stuff that can tell people how, you know, demonstrate how, how clever we are. But the fact is, it's often not addressing those very tactical problems and challenges that people want to have. People don't want to, no one talks about pricing because it's, it's confronting, but all the people are searching for pricing, right? All the people are searching for your competitors' names, all the people are searching for your competitors' products. You really should be writing about that stuff yeah. because that's how you capture the traffic. And that's something that's very, again, it's a very big barrier for people to start stepping over that if you're a, a worthy company with, you know, 20 years legacy in the marketplace and you're the industry leader, blah, 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 you, you're caught up in yourself rather than thinking about what is the actual market demanding that can help drive your connections. Um, I was just going to say, uh, what, the thing about content is it's so inextricably linked to sharing and social. And uh, I think the lessons of, of, of social is that you need that authenticity. What was the um, big uh, financial um, company that uh, put their C, asked the CEO and on Twitter and you know, within an hour they had to shut it down because the conversation out there amongst the, 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 the Twitter sphere was all about you know, how do you feel uh, uh, eating babies. You know? uh, what's the big... Um, Goldman Sachs. Goldman, Goldman Sachs, that's it. Goldman Sachs, you know, how dare they go out and say on Twitter, you know, the CEO is here to talk to you and not expect to get negativity. You know? and, and it was almost like a shock to them because in their ivory tower they suddenly had allowed the people in to say what they really wanted to say and they had to they shut it down that was their only reaction to it so you have to say to clients you know if you go marketers and companies if you're going to put yourself out there with content think about this as social because it's social sharing and if you're not authentic if you're not true yeah. if you're not honest you don't have to be um, uh, completely disclosing up front, but if someone challenges you on you, you have to be prepared to answer those criticisms honestly, because as soon as you shut it down, you look like you've got something to hide. In fact, they probably have. It comes, it comes down to a matter of trust. I think it's all about trust. So consumers are very uh, uh, mistrusting of brands these days. So if you open yourselves up and you have good intentions and it's, and it's well meant and it's about integrity, then consumers will respond to that and they will, they will feed off on that, but they can obviously, because everything's transparent on the internet, they can spot when you're lying or when it's a Goldman sure Sachs Goldman, gimmick. Yeah, I'm sure, I think it was Goldman Sachs thought they were being authentic. Yeah, yeah. They just didn't understand the audience. But you can't be authentic for, for 20 minutes, you know? <laughs> You've got to and, and I also think it's, a, it's about people to people rather than, you know, brand to people, and, and that, that, that is what authenticity really is all about. And, like, back to your point around rock stars, you know, internally, mm. I think that that's what it really is. Personal so, brands. Yeah, so um, that's where it comes from, and that's, um, you know, so listening, listening what, what your audience wants, but also then not bringing out the, the brand voice, but the, the people, the, mm. the brand as, as into what people do in the day-to-day. Another example on the transparency one, which I think is really interesting. 
So Walmart, obviously big US, you know, behemoth. They, um, I'm not sure how many people are familiar, in 2012 it broke, that there was this uh, bribery scandal in Mexico. They'd spent, I think, either 20 or 50 million dollars basically bribing their way into locations and fast tracking projects. Now the key thing with this is that Walmart's entire enormous PR focus is around positioning themselves as the um, trustworthy, support of the local environment would, you know, that it's, it's the antithesis of their entire aggressive positioning of doing the right thing. Their stock value dropped $12 billion in one day. Their market cap, sorry. Okay. So at, at some point, I mean, and even if, and this was related to a scandal that happened five years before, but it had only just been uncovered. At some point, transparency is going gonna, is gonna to make the truth come out. It's harder and harder to hide from these things. I'll give you another example. A friend of mine posted on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. I will never buy from, um, no, it was, a friend of mine just said why I use this photo sharing service instead of this one. And I said I'll never, sh I'll never use that one because I went through three interviews for a job with them and they never got back to me. And this had like, you know, quickly hundreds of comments from people saying that's the reason why I never get a Best Buy. Or that's the reason why I never do this. You know, I hate these people. This, this sort of content, the, these experiences, are now so, um, this, this sort of activity that's had an economic impact for so long that hasn't been measurable is now becoming very, very apparent. And doing the right thing by people and listening and understanding that there's an interconnection between your audience and your customers and your employees and everyone is actually the key to the, what the transparency thing means, I think. That was a big ramble. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Wow, let me, and let me tell you another thing. <laughs>